Welcome. I'm Terry Rhodes, Vice President for Quality Curriculum and Assessment. Welcome to AACNU's Next Generation Assessment Series on Assessing Student Learning and Institutional Effectiveness. Today, hosts Tammy Cumming and David Miller speak with Asana Leschinskaya and Claudio Piani about student evaluation of teaching and considerations of validity and fairness. Hi everyone, I'm Tammy Cumming. I'm the Assistant Vice President and Associate Provost for Institutional Effectiveness at Brooklyn College of the City University of New York. And I'm serving as your co-host today for our discussion on student evaluation of teaching and some considerations regarding reliability, validity, and fairness. And I'm David Miller from the University of Florida, also co-host. I'm a professor in research and evaluation methods. We're so excited to be talking about this topic today with Isana Leshinskaya from Brooklyn College, CUNY, and also Claudio Piani from American University of Paris, all the way in Paris, speaking to us today. So thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you for having us. Uh, I'm Isana. Uh, I am the Assessment and Accreditation Specialist at CUNY Brooklyn College, uh, and I focus on, part, partly focus on online assessment and uh, assessment in the remote environment. So I'm very excited to be here today. Hello, I'm Claudio Piani. Thank you, David and Tammy, for inviting me. I'm a professor in climatology, and I'm also the Associate Dean for Educational Assessment at the American University of Paris. Thanks so much for joining us. Today we have two questions that we're going to discuss, uh, both of them having to do with the student evaluation of teaching and how that's changing once we've moved to this new online environment. And the first question, of course, is whether or not the validity and, and the uh, fairness of the tests are, uh, or the assessment of, of uh, evaluations of teaching are, are really uh, going to continue. And, and the second question then will be what kinds of feedback can we get from instructors, uh, for instructors from the students in this environment? So Claudio, let me start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about this issue of fairness and validity in the new environment. Well, the short answer to, I mean, is, is the system still valid and fair? The short answer is no. Uh, these are extraordinary times. This is a very singular event. We will not have another pandemic in the next 10 years, unlikely in the, in, in, for the next few decades. Um, there was only one Spanish flu in the 20th century. So and when we evaluate our faculty, we, we, we're not interested in having faculty who have the capability of switching from one delivery method to another in a week or two. That's not something we're interested in. Moving your delivery method from one, from one delivery method to another takes usually a whole semester, takes a few months. So that's not a capability we're interested in. And also some kinds of, uh, of projects lend themselves to be taught online. Some projects don't. Some kinds of teaching methods lend themselves to, to transfer online, some don't. So this evaluation is no longer fair. Claudio, that you bring up a good point. Um, I agree with you. Uh, at Brooklyn College, we, we actually halted our student evaluation of teaching during this, what I'll call pause. And even though the um, instruction went very abruptly to an online environment, and I think we did as well as we could, and the students were, um, still provided with the education that they needed, you know, to continue their semester and to move forward in their degree programs, we thought that it wasn't fair to conduct the student evaluation of teaching um, during this semester. But that's not to say we weren't interested in the student feedback on how we were doing. Asana, can you talk to me a little bit about what you've done with respect to student feedback and for sure. instruction? Um, so teachers are teaching in a new way, students are learning in a new way. Uh, there are new tools being used and new uh, methods being used to engage the students in their learning. Uh, and it would be really helpful to both faculty and students for there to be some kind of feedback loop for faculty. So we recommend using a form of formative assessment, which is assessment that is done along the way during the learning or teaching process, uh, to help faculty see uh, what is working and what isn't uh, within the new instructional mode. Uh, a lot of learning management systems have uh, survey capabilities. Many of them are anonymous surveys, so students don't have to feel funny about responding about something that they don't like. And uh, faculty can ask questions about what things are working, what things aren't. Some 
instructional things that were done within a course set within an in-class setting might not work as well online. So getting that feedback will allow faculty to course correct and make sure that their students are still achieving the student learning outcomes for the course or for the program. Uh, in terms of, you know, how often to do this, um, maybe once at the end of each module, just to get a sense of how things are working as you go along would be helpful. And just a couple questions on the, the kinds of new tools that are being used would be a great help to faculty to make sure that their assess that that their teaching is effective during this semester. Claudio, yeah, that's interesting. I'm interesting um, interested to hear what Claudio has done at American University of Paris for collecting student feedback. So we deployed the student evaluations in the usual manner, just to maintain consistency. Um, but unlike any other semester, the results of that evaluation will only be visible to the faculty. Uh, for, for his or her course. Uh, the department chair will be able to see the aggregate results for the department. The provost's office in my office of uh, assessment of student learning will see both the departmental aggregates and the university aggregates. Uh, but talking about validity, one of the interesting results we had is halfway through the semester, we actually had an anonymous survey, just like Izana suggested, where we asked that qu the same questions in the evaluation, which are, does the course stimulate your thinking? Is the professor successful in establishing an environment that's conducive to learning? But we ask it as a comparative. How do you see the change between a normal semester and the COVID-19 semester? And if you look at those responses, it's clear that students reject the idea that the two delivery methods are equivalent. Bricks and mortar is great, Online is just not good enough. It doesn't match up in any way. But then, when we deploy the student evaluations normally, uh, which we got the results a couple of weeks ago, we see that the actual response is when the students are asked to evaluate the semester by itself, we get the same level responses. 90% of students feel that their, their faculty was successful in establishing an environment conducive to learning. 90% feel that the course triggered, uh, stimulated their thinking. So we have the same success. Students see the difference only when asked to compare the two. That's fascinating to me. That's in fact a great example, of course, some validation work that shows essentially that when you're getting disagreement between the two surveys, it shows something about the, the difficulty we're having now of interpreting what's going on in terms of, of uh, their evaluations of teaching. And so it's gonna be interesting to watch how all these changes uh, occur and, and what people do and, and use that data for over the coming periods. Yeah, really interesting conversation and great topic. Um, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. We're out of time, but until uh, next time, we'll see you later. Bye.